The dot product is one of the single most important computational building blocks in all of linear algebra and signal processing and statistics. The dot product is everywhere in theoretical and applied mathematics. And so in this video, you are going to learn about the dot product. So it turns out it's a really simple operation. I will show you the algebraic formula. I'll give you some geometric intuition. And that's going to lead to um, understanding some important terms like orthogonal and collinear, which are all based on the dot product. So let's begin with a little bit of terminology. The dot product is a scalar. That means it is a single number and it reflects a mapping or a relationship between two vectors of numbers, two lists of numbers that are the same size. So in different areas of mathematics, you might see different notations like a dot b or a comma b with these angle brackets. In linear algebra, you are most likely to see a with this superscripted t and then b, this is for the transpose operation. And here, this is actually just the formula for computing the dot product algebraically. So we have vector A and vector B, and then we multiply each individual, each corresponding element of A and B. So multiply the first element of A by the first element of B, the second element of A times the second element of B, and so on. And then we sum up all of those individual pointwise multiplications. So this is the algebraic formula for computing the dot product. Let me show you an example to give you a sense of how to compute the dot product. So here we have two vectors. And first of all, we have to check whether they are the same length. So in this case, they are. Both of these vectors have five elements. And then to compute the dot product between them, we say 1 times 2 plus 0 times 8 plus my, uh, 2 times minus 6 and so on. That looks like this. And that turns out to be number minus 5. Now, exactly what this number means and how to interpret it is something that you will learn more in, over the next several videos. But the important concept for this particular slide is that as long as the two vectors have the same length, so the same number of numbers, then they will always have a dot product that is a single number. So it's a single number that tells us something about the relationship between these two vectors or the mapping of these two vectors. Now, in a few moments in this video, I'm going to tell you about how to interpret the sign of this dot product. But first, I want to show you an example of why the two vectors have to have the same number of numbers for the dot product operation to be valid. So here we have a vector with five elements, and here's a vector with only three elements. So if we would try to compute the dot product between them, we have 1 times 2 plus 0 times 8 plus 2 times minus 6, so so far that's fine. But now we get to the 5 here, and there's no corresponding element to multiply the 5 or the minus 2. So this dot product operation is no longer valid. Okay, so this is the algebraic formula for computing the dot product. There's also a geometric interpretation of the dot product, and that is that we think about these two vectors, these lists of numbers, as corresponding to vectors in some high dimensional space. So if we have vectors with two elements, then it's easy. We can think about the first element being the x dimension and the second element being the y dimension. So then each uh, vector corresponds to a line on this plane. And then the dot product between these two vectors, a and b, is the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b times the cosine of the angle between them. So the magnitude of a that's you know given by or indicated by these vertical bars surrounding it, that's just the length of this line times the length of this line scaled by the cosine of the angle between these two lines, these two vectors. So this is pretty interesting to think about because lengths of lines are strictly non-negative. And in general, we will only consider them to be positive quantities. Technically, the length of a line can be zero if it's, you know, if the line has zero length, if it's just a point at the origin. But that's kind of a trivial case. So let's consider that the lengths of these lines will always be positive. So multiplying them together, of course, will always give a positive number. So that means that the sign of the dot product, so whether the dot product is positive or negative, 
is determined entirely by the cosine of the angle between them. And remember that the cosine of an angle can vary between minus one and plus one. So this third multiplica multiplication property here cannot be less than minus one and it cannot be greater than plus one. So let's think about some different dot product features based on the angle between these two vectors. So one possibility is that the angle is acute, so the angle between the two vectors is less than 90 degrees or pi over 2. Well, we know from trigonometry that the cosine of an acute angle is definitely going to be greater than 0. So that means the dot product between these two vectors will definitely be greater than 0. Again, we're not thinking about the magnitude here. The magnitude is determined by you know, the length of the two vectors and also exactly what the angle is. All we are thinking about is the fact that the dot product sign is necessarily going to be positive. So this quantity here is necessarily positive if the two vectors meet at an acute angle. So that's one possibility. Another possibility is that the two vectors meet at an obtuse angle, so an angle that is greater than 90 degrees. And again, we know from trigonometry that the angle or the cosine of an obtuse angle is less than zero. So that means we are definitely going to get a negative signed, a negative value dot product. So a dot product that is less than zero if the two angles, uh, or sorry, the two vectors meet at an angle greater than 90 degrees. Then we have another case here where the two vectors are meeting at an exact right angle. So theta equals 90 degrees or pi over two. And now the cosine of 90 degrees is zero. So that means that the angle, uh, the dot product between these two vectors is going to be zero. And that's a pretty interesting case because it doesn't matter what the length of A is, and it doesn't matter what the length of B is. If the cosine of the angle between them is zero, then the dot product is necessarily zero. This is such an important case in signal processing and data analysis and statistics that we have given a name just for this particular case, and that is called orthogonal. So if you hear this term orthogonal, that two vectors or two variables are orthogonal to each other, then geometrically it means that there is a space where those vectors meet at exactly a 90 degree angle. And you can also think of this like the mapping of one vector onto the other vector. So when these vectors meet at a right angle, there is no projection of the yellow vector onto the blue vector. They have absolutely nothing in common. Okay, so these are three cases. There's one more case based on theta where the theta is equal to zero, so the angle is zero. And okay, if you actually look really closely, you can see I think these vectors are shifted by maybe one or two degrees, but you know, you have to forgive my PowerPoint skills here and just imagine that these two vectors meet at a zero degree angle. So here the cosine is one, the angle or the cosine of zero degrees is one, and so that means that the dot product is just the length of one vector times the length of the other vector. This is also an important case, and we call this collinear. This is a term that you might come across in statistics, for example, in um, ANOVAs or multiple regressions. If you have some collinearities, then geometrically collinear means that the two vectors are on the same line. And by the way, this also applies to when the theta is 180 degrees. So 180 degrees would mean that they're still on the same line, just that one vector is pointing the other way. So it would be coming out here like this. So why am I telling you all of this information? Well, first of all, I think it's just kind of interesting to know. It's interesting to think about. But there is more practical importance of this particularly when we get to time frequency analyses, and you will see that there is a very important relationship between the sign of the dot product and the result of time frequency analyses, in particular in wavelet convolution.